Academy Health Spawn. Besides being an expert weapons master, I can transfigure and transform. Welcome everyone, happy new year. We are at the 10th annual Schomburg Center for the Black Comic Book Festival. Uh, we are here to celebrate Black comic creators and we are so excited to be here. This panel has so many talented people and I can't wait to just dive in and have this conversation. So thank you for tuning us in. Um, this panel that we're doing right now is featuring just so many interesting individuals. So creating powerful women in comics. I know it seems like, well, that's a simple conversation, but we always have to see, you know, sometimes women, women characters and marginalized genders not getting the representation they deserve. So today we are joined by Jamila. Uh, we're joined by Robin and Chanel. I hope that right. And Shawnee Gibbs twins. And we are going to talk about women in comics, creating these characters and the importance of really giving them the representation and the thorough char character development that they deserve. So um, I don't know if I'm going to turn my right to my left. Um, do you, okay, we can start off with Jamila. Do you want to go first, introduce yourself, let everyone know what you're currently working on and what people might know you for? <laughs> uh, hi, so I'm Jamila Rouser. I'm a, a comic book writer and publisher. I um, am most known for creating Wash Day with Robin Smith. Or wherever she is on the <laughs> and um our graphic novel watch day diaries is coming out june 14th pre-order um and i run black jose press which is a publishing company that focuses on publishing comics by and for black and brown women uh and non-binary black and brown folks so that's that's yeah and i've also written other comics swallow of the 3000 ode to keisha with Trinidad Escobar. I'm publishing a new book by Trinidad um, coming up in February called Arrive in My Hands. And um, I was in the latest Manana anthology. There's others, but that's the main stuff. <laughs> also, the Jordan, did you do like a... Um, oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> soul. <laughs> like, I have so many things. Me and Robin, the my like bestie of uh, I love working with Robin. We worked on um, a webcomic for Jordan Brands called Mighty Soul, which appeared in the Speakers app, which was really cool to work on. Uh, I guess yeah. I should go next. Yeah. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Robin Smith. Robin with a Y. There's been some mix-ups lately. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I work with Jamila a lot. I'm a cartoonist. I draw. Um, I just worked on Wash Day Diaries, Woo. June 14th, this year is coming out. I know Jamila just said it, but in case anyone forgot. Um, and I am also known for illustrating New Be A Real One, um, which was a comic about Wonder Woman's Black sister for DC Comics and um, Black Jose Press. Woo. Um, also um, published or, you know, republished um, my autobio comic, The Saddest Angers Black Girl in Town. So that's, that's me. Which just won an award, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Frontier. Congratulations. Um, 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so did old Takesha. <laughs> right. I forgot to say that you too. Did. That it's not about me anymore. <laughs> All right, sisters. Well, we are um, Shanae and Chanel Gibbs, honored to be a part of this wonderful panel today. We are known for um, our steampunk adventure series, the invention of E.J. Whitaker. Um, we are, are currently working on an upcoming graphic novel for HarperCollins called Ghost Rose. And uh, we're also working on um, an upcoming graphic novel with IDW. We do independent comic work. We also work um, in animation and are also currently writing for Cartoon Network. Chanel is my sister and writing partner. <laughs> um, and I'll allow her to introduce herself too, but we are also um, publishers uh, of Bopsy Books where we create compelling narratives for contemporary and multicultural audiences. And Shanae pretty much summed it up. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, yes, I'm Chanel Gibbs. Uh, happy to be on this panel and to be celebrating 10 years of the comic, uh, Black Comic Book Festival. Um, and just excited to get into this conversation with uh, these wonderful, talented ladies. And you, Erica. Let's go. Let's have some fun. Yeah. Magazine. Yeah. Just happy to be here. So, um, before the world blew up in this pandemic, uh, last year, or was it the year before you? No, it was last year. So each and every one of you was featured in my 28 Days of Black Girls in Comics. So every day we did, we highlighted um, uh, trans and Black women and Black marginalized folks who are writing comics because oftentimes when we talk about black comics and indie comics it's very male centered so uh we wanted to like change that and for everyone else yes absolutely get wash diaries uh i actually got an advanced copy <laughs> the other day so i am so happy it looks so beautiful so you guys i'm just so excited so creating powerful women in comics I want to ask you all the same question. What does that look like? What does it take to create powerful women in your stories? Whether you're doing sci-fi, slice of life, um, fantasy, what do you need to bring to your character to make them powerful? I'll, uh, I'll jump right out here and start. Um, I think a lot of times it takes, you know, looking in the mirror. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, um, and I think uh, for for me in particular and for us, um, and I'll just speak for myself, um, I feel like <laughs> just looking at the women in our lives uh, did a lot to, um, to show us really strong, uh, powerful women with stories that were <laughs> For us, like larger than life <laughs> and um, really inspiring and uh, taught us how to be brave in this world. You know, as Black women, um, our grandmother grew up as a sharecropper in the South. She was the, the daughter of a sharecropper. They picked, you know, um, cotton and everything. Um, and uh, they made the trip west uh, to California. And those sorts of stories, just hearing about our grandmother, who also was a twin, <laughs> uh, uh, and her her sister, Jessie and Bessie, um, really just was like, wow, like, oh my God, like this, this is a complete movie here. And I'm still working on, you know, how we're gonna do that. But um, we did uh, honor them in a comic called Jessie and Bessie are outside. <laughs> And it was about, um, you know, because our grandmother also grew up loving um, Westerns. And uh, she would, you know, put on one of those John Wayne pictures all the time. <laughs> and so uh, we would just be sitting up watching Westerns with our with our grandmother and uh, hearing about her stories of like kicking butt and taking names, <laughs> uh, you know, throughout Oklahoma and all ac across the West and, uh, and, and coming to when she actually came to Oakland, California. So. Um, those sorts of things inspired um, us originally. And uh, to be able to pay tribute to Jesse and Bessie, our, our grandmother and her sister, and make them their own Western heroes 
um, that that was like a big deal for us. So it started started with just like the larger than life women in our lives and um, has has crept out into all sorts of stories. And I do want to say um, issue two of Invention of B.J. Whitaker, we have not <laughs> properly uh, acknowledged is out and came out at the end of last year and is available and we love it. And um, we're happy to be here to talk about it as well. Um, I could also, yeah, creating like Black women in comics is all I care about. <laughs> that's like just my mission, my, <laughs> my, like, that's just what I, what I do. That's my main focus. And I think the powerful part comes from um, trying to make sure there's like uh, a wide array of diversity and authenticity in the types of women that are featured in non-binary folks because strong black women doesn't need to be like you are really tough and you know can withstand anything and you're physically strong and mentally strong it means that like you are a complex feel real kind of character and with that i just look at myself i look at my friends um i just want to make sure that when i'm creating characters i'm really intentional with the types of like personalities and the things that they go through um so different people can feel seen in them because i some people may think oh jamila's so strong blah 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 it's like yeah but i got depression i got anxiety i got chronic illness <laughs> so like what you may see isn't what is going on so i want to show how complex that is um and we are not a monolith so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And what do you what do you feel is needed to make uh, powerful women characters? Like what what what's the recipe? Me? For everybody. Oh, recipe? I don't. It's just it. I don't really. It just comes natural. I think I think about the type of story first, like the story I'm trying to tell, and the types of um, like personalities and dynamics that I think would be really good for the story. And then um, that's when I start to go like deeper into the characters. Um, it a lot of it's based off of the story. Sometimes I have the story that comes to my mind first, not the characters. And sometimes I have characters that pop up first, and then the story is kind of more built around them. Um, so it, it yeah, it depends. Yeah, and <clears throat> Jamila, just to, to piggyback on uh, what you're saying, it's really about um, having a, a vast array of voices because we know, I mean, growing up, you get the, you know, we've seen the types, you know what I mean? Like you've seen the strong person, the tough person who nothing can penetrate. We've seen the sassy, you know, side character, you know, we've seen all these types. And it's now, I mean, the beautiful thing about uh, today um, and contemporary voices is that we're able to tell more complex stories. It's and and um, having the experience to come in and be like, I mean, even if somebody um, is trying to direct you towards those types, you know, um, we can we we now have the the power and the voice to like say no, you know, we're 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 trying to create um, more complex, rich stories, richer characters. Um, for me, it's like using like Chanel and Jimmy Lev said using the women that I, we know, the women that, the woman that I am, you know, knowing that um, just because you see somebody who, you know, is uh, externally doing well, you know, does, does that mean um, what's, go, what's really going on internally? And that's the other thing I feel like in terms of Black um, stories for Black women, we haven't really got into the internal dynamics of like what makes um, characters tick, you know, um, and I love that we're, we've been able to now flesh that out, bring our full selves uh, to the table and to to the uh, to the story. Um, and, you know, that's something Chanel and I are passionate about in our work and what we're going to, you know, continue to try and do as we move forward. Okay. 
when you're creating these worlds and characters and stories, are there any tropes that you avoid that's for everybody? Oh, and Robin, I'd love to hear about your process. I'm like, so <laughs> <laughs> um, Tropes that I avoid, all of them. Like, I feel like I, I'm not sure. Like, I, I don't even try and familiarize like myself with the tropes. Of course, I know what they are because they're, they've been around me my entire life. So I'm not going to be like, oh, what are they? Like, at this point, I like just really like making again I like there's a reason Jamila and I are always working together and it's because all we care about is making comics about like black women so I am like not even too concerned about like oh how am I going to make this story like about this particular black woman exceptional I because I'm going to have so many more chances to show so many other kinds of black women because that is my focus so all of that is to say that like making a powerful like putting powerful women in comics like it's about making them as like regular as possible and um when i say regular i don't mean like they have no personality but that they care about the smaller things that like they have to make decisions throughout the comic that would be done in like a regular way like one of my favorite things about nubia um yeah she's a superhero but so much of the comic too is just learning about like who she is as a person and her going to high school and her like sneaking out to go to a party and like oh she's scared because who likes sneaking out like she obviously has the abilities to like get off of her roof without hurting herself but she's still ner so nervous about it that she does you know like it's all these like smaller things that happen that don't prove that she's like this cool person who has no feeling she's super confident she like because oh black women are like all all these things like oh we all have a black woman inside us kind of thing you know mm -hmm. like the amount of times that I've heard that is ridiculous but also like what what does that what could that mean it all like we're we're not a monolith like to me was said um so going back on like the question about what's the recipe I feel like, I don't know, I just like, I love what I do <laughs> and I don't know what the recipe is. Like, I don't think I have the advice for someone who'd be watching this panel, hoping, like trying to necessarily change the way that they're writing women. They need to like, I guess, reflect on what it is that they're doing mm -hmm. and learn something about like, it, that's beyond like creating comics and art. It's it's um like sociological what it is that like the boxes that you've decided to put black or women in, particularly black women. And from there, maybe then you'll figure out your recipe for creating powerful women in comics. Um, tropes, the best friend who's a fashion designer. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe my like least favorite it's more I feel like that's definitely more recent I've talked about it a lot um in on panels where I'm like oh here comes the creative like black friend who has like color in her hair and now she's like she makes the friend her prom dress like because her prom dress was burned by her evil sister or something I that's a movie I'm not making that up um but <laughs> Specifically that trope, but also, yeah, I'm going to stop talking now. It's okay. Um, I kind of want to jump into like teamwork and, you know, as because you all, because, you know, Chanel and Shadi are twins. So they have this connection of like what they want to do. And I think it's Polygon recently said that Jamila, Robin, y'all like the powerful, like y'all the new dream team to, to work together, right? So... <laughs> how do you all bounce ideas off of each other? Like, is it like, are you watching something and then like you text and like, okay, I'm thinking about this. Or is it like you collectively just exchange notes? Like, what does that look like for y'all? I did what, uh, I did want to go back to the re the recipe really quick for, okay, no problem. Um, yeah. And I'm, I mean, uh, it's not like a, 
two cups of flour, two cups of cinnamon, <laughs> and some cayenne pepper, you know, I get a black woman. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, I do think that the, you know, the, um, the recipe or it, it, you know, it, life influences all of these stories, just as everybody has said. And um, I mean, even I think since 2020, um, and uh, experiences with loss and all this kind of stuff, that's affected uh, my storytelling in a completely different way, you know? So I think different uh, aspects and, um, and the arcs of your own life will also um, deepen and, and enrich, and enrich, and, uh, enrich your stories as well. Um, and as, as far as working to, oh, you know what? There's one other thing I wanted to say about a, an, an editorial note. Um, that we got on a story that we were telling. Um, and I do think um, sort of, uh, I feel like sometimes you, you're you put in a box in like a class sort of box um, when you're an African-American writer and people wanna, you know, we want positive, you know, that's kind of the thing that kind of gets me sometimes when people are like, we want positivity and, you know, uh, this feels, to ur you know urban or whatever so we had a note that was like oh this uh character this moment feels um one of the characters didn't have the best relationship with his dad um his his you know and that was a, a big part of uh, a moment in our story and uh one of our editors was like oh this feels kind of like stereotypical you know and um that was something that happened in our own lives and we had to like push back on that note like hey we don't, you know, everything is not, you know, I know Cosby is <laughs> controversial to say now, but it's, this is, you know, not these types of stories that we're, we're telling all the time. And I do feel like there's a class divide sometimes too, when you're, um, when you're telling these stories, but um, I'll let Shanae speak to, um, and, and I just want to show the complete, um, all, all of what's happening in our communities and um, in our lives as black women, um, no matter what our economic, um, in our socioeconomic background. So, uh, Shanae, I'll just, uh, I'll let you speak to working together. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've been, well, well, our partnership is, you know, started in the womb, we say, because <laughs> we're twins, but um, we, um, we work, we've been kind of like developing the way that we work, because when you have a, a partnership, it's great. First of all, it's great to have a partner. Oh yeah. And we love being on this panel talking with partners because you don't also, you don't always get to talk with people who work together a lot. So this is dope. I love it. Yeah. So even like if, if we, when we're partnering with our other artists who we work with regularly, you know, you know, you have your system of how you work together, but for Chanel and I, as um, writers, we'll, these days it's like I don't want to be I mean Google Docs is like oh my god the <laughs> best thing because you can easily like we we have this big old massive document of just story ideas <laughs> that we build on um and we can work simultaneously so we're just like we're sharing stuff all the time we're gathering stuff into our big documents and just sort of um working that way and we always I mean we're working um you know outlining on virtually, you know, sto sto story outlining, premising, writing our scripts, <laughs> that sort of a way. Um, but that's been a, the wonderful way that we've been able to work. But Chanel, in terms of how we, we write our stories, you know, we both bring something a little different to the table. Um, Chanel, how would you characterize, you know, how we, it's like building a house. <laughs> I have to like, <laughs> so I'm sort of the person who, you know, uh, I'm the, uh, I guess I'm the art, sort of the, the person who, you know, is worried about the walls and <laughs> the floorboards and all of that stuff. And Chanel too is like, a, you know, we're both quite kind of story architects. Chanel will like be our interior designer, putting the beauty, the paint, making it, you know, making it wonderful. Um, and that's sort of the way uh, we've been able to, um, to, to, you know, make our storytelling happen. Um, for Robin and I, it's been really interesting since we've worked on three projects mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and then I also published her work. It's, it's just very, um, we just became also like best friends. So I am always 
like just leaving her voice notes of random comic ideas I have or things of like, oh, it'd be cool if you did this. And then just, you know, <laughs> moving on. But when it comes to, you know, working with an artist as the writer, I try to do as much as I can to make Robin's life and any other artist's life that I'm working with as easy as possible because art is hard. It takes a long time. So I spend like extra time making folders of reference images. If I in my head don't really know how I would draw a camera like exactly, I'm like, I didn't have to do that work. Um, and also just knowing what she likes to draw and what she doesn't like to draw. Um, <laughs> in the beginning, when I wrote Wash Day, the, the first mini, I had wrote it without knowing the artist that I was going to work with. Um, and then when it came to Wash Day Diaries, I'm like, okay, oh, am I not? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, let me see. Back, back. Okay, sorry, there's a technical difficulties. Okay, um, <laughs> we see you, we see you. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Uh, when it came to wash day diaries, I'm like, okay, what do you hate drawing? Because I will <laughs> try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, and just knowing things like crowd scenes don't need to happen all the time. Like just being mindful of, um, I, I try to be a collaborator and a good partner and um, thinking about how much work and like physical energy it, it is to, to create art. Um, and um, we have very similar tastes. We're Aries, we like the same kind of music and all that kind of stuff. So um, usually like whatever I like, she likes. And um, I also like to give her the freedom. Um, the scripts are not like, you have to do it exactly as I say. I really want any artist that I work with to use it as like a guide and you know if I say five panels and this is how it's set up but you think it would be better with you know a full page kind of different spread try it out like I'm always open to I want it to feel more like a collaboration than like a here's my thing make it exactly as I said because I always think it is better with collaboration yeah same I mean I I just think we have a very similar like like our tastes are super similar like the story that we're trying to tell is always like even the fact that Jamila like will leave you know some of the decisions up to me I feel like in the end it's like as if we had made the decision together which we do and we also talk every day so I feel like that's part of it just I I love that we're talking about collaboration right now and that we are also on this panel with two people who are super close. <laughs> um, so good. Uh, just because I, I am also like, I am definitely for like collaborative work in comics. I think um, finding the one <laughs> or like someone that you really like gel with and you're trying to tell the same story can be super helpful because then you don't have to do it alone, which is nice. Um, and I get, I, I like, I'm very grateful to Jamila for like doing so much of like the reference work and stuff like that. Like those are the like parts of the reason that I'm like, yeah, I will let's continue working. Cause I mean, I could still like, just like her and then not want to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not the case. I love working with you. Um, so I think like finding a person who, I think most importantly, like wants to tell the same story um, is kind of how it can make it an easier process. And then everything else can fall into place. That's that so comics good. Is such yeah. A, yeah, it's such a collaborative medium. I mean, and it's really like having a strong team partnership, you know, going into it, whether you're a comic book writer uh, or uh, an artist is a really beautiful thing and has been wonderful for, I mean, I don't know how I would do, I would, I don't know how I would do <laughs> comics <laughs> or animation or anything without having Chanel. It's just beautiful to have somebody to partner with and the mm -hmm. artists that we work with too, yeah, like Mark you two Hernandez. are saying. Yeah, Mark Hernandez, Earl Womack, Emily Cannon, um, a lot of the people that we work with is just, um, 
it's such a, a big task to create a book, you know <laughs> what I mean? To bring it from script to page and published and out there independently too, um, <sighs> even, you know, with, with, with big publishers behind you. So having a strong team, finding those people that you can work with is, is just, is beautiful. Yeah, and I, I just, I love the, because we've been working with um, Mark Hernandez, has <laughs> been like a long time for like maybe 10 years now. Mm -hmm. I've had, did you hear my voice go up like two years? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, and that was just like off of another animation project. Uh, we worked with uh, Earl on a lot of our short stories and a lot of other projects who just, we were at a um, Long Beach Comic Con. He's from the East Coast. He's from like Connecticut. We were crossing the street and like <laughs> crossed each other. And he was like, hey, y'all, what's up? We weren't even in the <laughs> convention. <laughs> we were just cross. I just, and I, I keep thinking back to that day all the time. Like, what if we never, what if we were on the other side of the street? You know what I mean? It's, I mean, it, to me, it's just crazy. And then we're just like, so much like kindred spirits, a lot of us will just like let, let uh, Mark go back and do his thing, Earl go and then Emily go back and do her thing. And then just like, it's like, it's, it's this flow, this like three or four brains coming together. It's like a hive or something. And then uh, just to come come back and see what we were, we've been able to do. And then just like to be able to work with the same folks over and over again and just have them believe in us, you know what I mean? And us believe in them and just, you know, keep doing this thing is, um, I don't know, it just makes me, it just warms my heart, you know, and mm -hmm. to see you ladies working together and to know we were on the panel uh, with you, Jamita, like a few years ago doing this and just like everybody yeah. just like bubbling and like doing all these amazing things. It just feels so good. Like this is a really good time, even though we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic you know I mean? <laughs> like it's it's so weird but yeah it's, it's amazing um I'm actually really happy that you all are talking about you know the teamwork y'all have and the closest you had because I know there are people that would be watching this panel especially other black girls black women and they're going to be like well I want to be a comic book writer but I don't have a best friend that's an artist or I don't know how to um, it can happen. It takes time to find a match. It's like finding a perfect pair of shoes or the perfect lipstick. It has to like, you know, it will work itself out if, you know, you trust the process. Earlier this year, um, I did a comic um, with Karen DeBeau, who is actually Italian. She's a Black girl from Italy. So English isn't her first language. So my first comic was with an artist who didn't speak English, but, you know, as Jamila said, I gave her a bunch of references. I had a whole Pinterest, you know, board and giving her all these images so I can, so I can help her with the process and just communication with the artist. You know, the artist isn't your particular artist. It's not your graphic designer. It's a, it's a collab. So I'm glad you said that, Jamila, because a lot of people think that the artist is, you know, you're giving them all the orders and they're just giving you what they, what you put on paper is that room for their interpretation as well. So that's really important. Also, you made a point, um, I think with Shani, you made a point that um, the social economic factor into black girl characters. Um, I think personally, I think that also kind of like drives tropes as well like either you're a bougie black girl and you're kind of like re-image like black back batman right you're rich and you're like out of touch to like community needs and things like that so you operate this way or you're poor and you operate a separate way so i i definitely agree with that so how do you all navigate those social economic aspects of your character um, Marisol Soul is a really good example of this. So uh, when working with Jordan Brands, they already had the idea of the character, this Dominican, Afro-Dominican girl living in Washington Heights. And I'm Black, Puerto Rican, Dominican. And so I was like, yes, this is, and it was Slice of Life. I'm like, sign me up. Um, but when creating that character, who is a sneakerhead, Oh, I think my internet might be unstable. Um, I have to think about how is this teenager affording these shoes? So, uh, because like, like this, I want to be realistic. So, you know, creating her uncle who, um, you know, 
is a sneakerhead also got her into sneakers and buys most of her shoes for her is like how I balance that but also her as a character is like okay yes she lives in Washington Heights people may have specific ideas of what people who live in Washington Heights are like but I want her to be a softer uh, kinder person who isn't like I don't know what people be thinking but you know <laughs> hood fighting whatever mm -hmm. whatever like though that exists too but I did not because um the amount of variety of people I was able to show I wanted to be really specific with how I developed her character whereas when it comes to like wash day diaries where I'm uh more in control and it's just a bunch of black women I feel like I don't think about the tropes as much because they won't feel like tropes if there is a diversity of different types of like personalities and backgrounds and things like that. Anybody else want to add to that? Yeah. <laughs> um, and you said something about lipstick. I was gonna jump. I was gonna say you say that with that like popping red that you have going on. You know what? I didn't even know what it was. Oh, I had okay. It in my bag, and I just picked one out, and I was like, "Yes, it's a color." And I just put it on real quick. I was gonna slide that in, and sometimes I could just do. I just, I'm trying to be, you know, together here. But um, um, yeah, I, I was gonna say um because our lives have um across different um, socioeconomic spectrums and stuff, um, it, our character, some of our characters, you know, they are, they are at different points in, lo in, in life. And, um, and that's really important to us too, to, uh, to, to, to pay, honor our characters wherever they are. And um, it, like in Ghost Roast that's coming out in 2023, that's going to be on Versify um, and Harper Collins. Um, she's struggling with that. One of our, our characters, um, who's a teenage um, protagonist, is struggling with uh, those issues. And we wanted to authentically put that in there because that was something that we, you know, um, had to deal with growing up as well. We are from Oakland. Um, and we were at, uh, from Oakland at a time before all of the cafes got on the, the corners in, in certain areas, you know what I mean? But um, wow, yeah, I, I think- time. I feel like so long ago. And what'd you say? say that again. I said, what a time. That felt uh, you like know, so long yeah, ago, internet I, cafes. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. And so I, I do think that's important because I do, do think some people, um, and I hate to, I don't know, I don't, I, 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 it's a weird sort of, uh, place to be because some people say hey you know we've we've made it or they turn and assume that hey oh you guys uh, and we uh a lot of people assume that hey you're from this strata or you you know you're you're like me or you know and I'm like hey we we had to come through some things to get here you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. so to to be um you know where I'm at today and to also stay connected with what's happening um, in our communities. We do a lot of work with um, young women um, mentoring, um, which is a, is a big deal for us to be coaching young women in the Bay Area with writing um, and just, you know, trying to stay connected to youth all over, you know, and in South LA, we're also in Los Angeles now. Um, but just to stay connected to all aspects of, of, um, of you know, who we are. And um, that's really important. And I think it reflects in our stories, but I can't, you know, come out and say, uh, hey, I'm not going to go here or there, you know, um, I think it's, it's important to our, my work, at least to acknowledge these, um, us wherever we are and not have it be like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to hear about that. I, I something about like, uh, <laughs> uh, positive, you know, this, I feel like the trap of positivity in our storytellings too is just really gets to me and you've heard it this is the second time you heard it but um I, I do love to explore us as we are full um the full body of who we who we are yeah I think the term toxic positivity that you know has been happening over the <laughs> yeah. last couple of years um that has been applying to people also can apply to storytelling you know what I mean and the toxic positivity like we want it to be so clean or so perfect you know 
And nothing is perfect. I mean, uh, just as Chanel was saying, speaking from our own backgrounds, you know, um, growing up in a single parent household um, and, um, you know, being exposed to a social economic, um, you know, uh, situation that is not perfect. You know what I mean? And then as a teenager, especially we, and the other thing we want to um, validate where people are, wherever they are, like, and if you happen to be at this particular place, that's okay. You know, you can be comfortable, you can feel powerful. You know, uh, we just want to empower people where they are. And we want to do that with our storytelling because that's a, um, an honesty and truth that um, comes from our own backgrounds. And if, if um, in terms of the recipe you were talking about, Erica, earlier, I think honesty is like <laughs> the most important ingredient, you know, because um, when you're telling stories, um, you got to get into that character's perspective. You can't just slap and be like, okay, this is my black character. <laughs> Doody, doody, do. You know what I mean? Like you have to dig in there, get to the honest um, core of what that person might be experiencing, put, 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 put on their shoes, put on their clothing, like see through their eyes. Um, and so particularly with the story we're telling uh, for Ghost Roast, that was important to us because a lot of um, kids, particularly in areas that are gentrifying, um, you're exposed to, you know, so, you know, your house might not have got flipped. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It may not have the, all the um, the pretty things and all that stuff. And you still have to, you know, move in these spaces and you have to be able to feel okay about yourself as you move in these spaces. And we certainly want to, we want black girls to embrace that, you know, just as we did, you know, and, and you know, um, as we came along uh, into womanhood. So you're going to be at a, I mean, the other thing is you're going to be, you never know what level you're going to be at. <laughs> you're going to be at high level. You're going to be at middle levels, you know, might be at some low points, you know, and that's all right, you know. Um, but yeah, just uh, being okay, you know, and um, giving yourself um, compassion, you know, where, wherever that space is, that's uh, important for us. All right. Um, I do have a quick question. I want, I want your feedback on it. So last year we saw like a, um, accelerated interest in uh, non-white stories, right? It kind of trickled into publishing, like where people were just buying up all these black books and stuff like that. Did you see anything like that in comics? Did you see more people interested in in comic books and graphic novels written by black people or or with more diverse characters or was that something just for traditional publishing books? It's hard. I think there's, it, I think it's a yes and a no. Um, comics is big. And there are all kinds of people who are in the comics community. So you will have the people who do not, who the racists who don't want diversity. And then you will have the people who are not racist who do. And so that is, something that really um, is at a, it, there's, that's a continuous battle going on. Um, I do think there's been more effort for larger publishers to be more diverse. Um, I think they need to also be diverse behind the page too, which I think they don't do as well. And if they do, it's somebody who's famous already. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think there's been some more movement uh, more prominence shown to like graphic novels by and, and for black folks. But um, uh, part of it is it just seems like they feel like they have to versus they want to. And I don't, I mm. want us to get past that. Um, and I think it's because they don't know what our stories are, what our stories could be. And then we get forced into these, like, we can only tell historical stories or stories of black struggle. And it's like, no, I want to tell a story about this girl struggling to twerk in a club because that is important to me. <laughs> like I, every, <laughs> all of our stories are important, literally Wild Will Be 3000, um, at a creative with Savvy Borno, but like all of those stories are important and I don't want uh, black folks to feel like we can only tell what they think is important. Um, so that's sort of answered. It's like a, it's, it, it's interesting out there. <laughs> yeah, I would say that I have a, somewhat distrust of the sudden interest. Um, I think it was trendy, especially around the time of all the protests. Um, I like noticed, and I think this happened to a lot of black creators, um, just 
a surge in like followers or just people who are trying to hire you because they needed a black person like to be on the team. They needed that name. They needed that face. They literally needed your skin color to like show up in their like little roster or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I like want to take advantage of it. Of course, <laughs> like I want to like somehow sneak what I want into it, even though I do know why I'm here. I know why I like not here right now. This is great. But like when I'm the only like brown face on a panel, suddenly I'm like, oh, and you know, you got that last minute call. It's mm -hmm. like, you can't mm -hmm. help but like know why you're there. So, I mean, I, you know, I have my moment of sulking and then I go, let me be really loud. Um, and I think that's like, like I said, I distrust it, but I, um, I am ready for there to be like actual, like, I want all of us to be behind, like, I want us to be everywhere. I love that. Yeah, I think um, after we lost George Floyd, um, I feel like there was a lot of effort, you know, in different um, mediums across, uh, you know, we saw it in animation, we saw it in comics, we saw it in uh, publishing and um, just a lot of stuff just getting sw swooped up. They're like, where are the black people? <laughs> you know what I mean? Just bring them forward <laughs> now. I don't care, you know, just whatever. And and I, I feel like, um, and, and that's always neat. I mean, you know what I mean? I, I feel like without, you know, some special agenda or whatever, I think that's always needed. And I'm interested to see where this is, um, some of this is going. You're already starting to see some of that changing, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to be a, a, a of the moment sort of thing, you know? It, it would just be great to be able to con continue this work because we were, we, we've always been here and we always have our stories. And, um, and so just want to continue to see us having these opportunities um, to infinity, <laughs> you know? So. And beyond, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, it's uh, just like everybody's been saying, I think, yeah, it, it has been happening. I also see it as an opportunity to affect change, even if, you know, maybe somebody's intentions might just be like, let me get a black face on this, you know, <laughs> panel, or let me get a black, you know, artist or whatever. Um, I think that's where uh, we use our voices to to help um, crack some of the old, you know, veneer, you know, like change from the inside out, you know, what's been going on. Because uh, the truth is that even though they're just realizing, so, some places are just realizing that they need our voices, um, this is where um, our voices can matter, you know, when when we got we got to get that story of you know the girl twerking you know learning how to twerk at the club you know and why that's important you know what i'm saying like we got to get all of these stories um and and make um you know black women people of color everybody just see feel seen you know and and um and then there's no question as to why you know um we don't necessarily need the fashion design um, sidekick character. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we just, you would, we just start starting to to um, have people understand, you know, who we are and 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 what we're you know doing. So, yeah, I think it's important. I think this is a um, like those those points in history where like incremental change like kind of starts to happen because we're doing it from the inside out. So I see it as an opportunity even though it's just sort of like, mm, you know. <laughs> Agreed. All right, guys, I want to tell y'all that we have some questions from the audience. We have 10 minutes left. So I want to get, these are some really good questions. Um, this is for everybody on the panel. Um, who are, or if there are, uh, feminist writers who influence your work? Are there any feminist writers? And if they are, who are they? Um, I got a lot of influence from um, creators, creatives in like all different mediums, specifically with comics. A lot of my influence comes from Jose manga. So like manga for adult women. And so like folks like Ayazawa was a huge in inspiration for me who did Paradise Kiss to Nana. 
um, but also like Missy Elliott as a creative, a writer, everything that she does is really inspirational too um, as well. Like I don't just Solange like a lot. I'm very inspired by a lot of musicians and their creativity. Um, Bell Hooks, Rest in Power, like Black women, period, walking down the street. Like hmm. I'm just influenced by <laughs> so many just of us um, and women, um, a lot of Jose manga writers for sure, and Black women as <laughs> a whole. <laughs> yeah, I do feel like um, growing up with hip hop, you know what I mean? Um, women speaking powerfully for um, a good, and still here speaking powerfully, like, you know, Queen Latifah. Um, you know, Lauren Hill, I'm going to love her forever. I'm still waiting on whatever she wants to bring to us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and um, I was just listening to a conversation between Bell Hooks um, and Gloria Steinem, and the work is never done. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just never done globally um, here in the States. Black women, you know what I mean? Specifically, the work that we're, we're doing is, um, is never done. And I, I, I want to shout out Joan Morgan who uh, wrote uh, When Chicken come, chicken Heads Come Home to Roost, like back in the day, that was a big um, influence on, on me and our work. But um, Shanae and I will continue. We, we stand for Octavia Butler, <laughs> um, who's like pioneer in, in science fiction and um, just as a phenomenal African-American woman writer who continues to influence. We found her um, as teenagers and she continues to influence our work. If, um, if I could... Um, influence you know one person <laughs> you know what I mean with the work that we're doing it would be a, a great honor but these women you know live in us and um like I'm going back to my grandmother I mean I could be here all day talking about a lot of the stuff that she went through and had to um had to ex experience and, and face and uh and uh and I overcome. think we definitely have a conversation about how yeah, our, our over, personal yeah, ancestors, you exactly. know, our family influences us. Yeah, grandmothers and great grandmothers. Yeah, so all that lives in us I, is what I want to say. Like I, I do believe that not only the the DNA of of um you know our biological um, ancestors, but the ones who came before us um, with feminist work and with this work that we're doing is is pretty powerful, and to be able to stand in their 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 uh shoes and you know on their shoulders and you forward is pretty awesome anybody else want to contribute before i move on to the next and possibly final question before we're done um i guess i like just also like want to mention i again like jamila and i very similar music is also a super big deal to me and like a lot of um, like Jamaican dance hall music is very important to me. Uh, like I'm from Jamaica and I mean, a lot of like Jamaican culture and like a lot of women f throughout like Jamaican history and artists and all of that, like I like their freedom and like what they do with their bodies and like how they dress and like what they do and like their power like comes through so vividly in like, especially dance hall music, like um, and reggae, like, Coffee right now and Shensia, like I watch them, their music videos, like the same music video, maybe like every day, just to like get that energy to then like do what it is that I want to do because I feel like that's exactly what they're doing right now. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I just I second everything that everybody said. Uh, hip hop, particularly like the Bay Area Oak. Oakland hip hop scene uh, coming up, just seeing independent artists like go for it, uh, taught us that, uh, you know, we could go for it in independent animation and comics. And um, yeah, Octavia Butler, we stand, Toni Morrison, the literary scene also like really influenced us, Alice Walker, all the greats, um, animation, Miyazaki, you know, um, just everything. We're just sponges, you know, creative sponges, you know, black, like black women everywhere inspiring me and keeping me going. Um, so yeah, those are definitely huge influences. Um, that was all great answers. I, I expected nothing less, literally. <laughs> um, um, this has been a very informative panel and um, 
based on the questions we've been receiving, I see that, you know, you all are actively influencing a generation of upcoming Black women writers, artists, and um, before we conclude, I would like for you all to give the audience um, a very short, you know, three words that you want to give of encouragement to the to the audience and let people know where to find you on social media. So three words to inspire that you want the audience to walk away with and where they can find you on social media. I'm like counting. I have four, so I'll say it real quick. <laughs> I'm like, that's slowing. Don't wait for, for, for permission. Don't wait for permission. Just do it. I could have said that, but that's too, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, and you can find me at Jamila Rouser everywhere. Um, and so that's J-A-M-I-L-A-R-O-W-S-E-R. And then uh, my publishing company, Black Jose Press, and it's Jose, J-O-S-E-I, Press. Um, dot com, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Okay, I'll just do it in one word. Uh, that one word is create. Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram at shawnee.gibbs and Twitter at the same uh, handle. Three words. Um, you. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. You go. I don't have my three words. <laughs> go away. Do it yourself. Me too. You said do it uh, yourself? Do it yourself, yes. Um, and you can find me at uh, Nail the Yale on Twitter and Instagram. Um, okay. Um, start small. Um, I'll just leave that. You can find me um, anywhere at RoboSmo, which is R O B R O S M O. All right, and I guess I'll say um, my three words would be take up space, you know, um, and you can find me on social media, uh, Fabulize Mag, F-A-B-U-L-I-Z-E-M-A-G on Twitter and on Instagram, fabulizemag.com. Um, this has been a very great discussion. Thank you all for participating. Thank you all for um, answering questions from the audience. Thank you to the audience for tuning in. And thank you to the Schomburg for giving us another opportunity to talk about powerful women in comics. I can't wait to read more <laughs> and I can't wait to buy more and support more. So thank you all. Um, continue to enjoy the Schomburg and I hope you have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Erica. Thank you. Bye. Yay.